uh, dramatic news, and, and we can only honor him as, as who as a person he was. He, he was obviously one of the most courageous people in, uh, in, in Russia. Uh, what he stood for was anti-corruption, uh, respect of human law, um, fighting uh, the, the methods of, uh, of, President, uh, of President Putin, and, and he continued that, uh, that fight. Uh, we really would stand with his, with his families and with his, uh, with his, uh, with his friends. Uh, but it really shows who we are fighting against. Not we, Ukrainians are, uh, and we will continue to support them. I think it also makes very, very clear why we as NATO countries need to be more united than ever and really be very, very clear that we will defend all NATO countries and we will do it for every, uh, every centimeter of, uh, of their space. Can you speak on behalf of the United States, though? Because the former president, Donald Trump, said that he essentially not come to the rescue of mm -hmm. NATO allies if Russia were to attack one of them. And actually, Belgium could be in a situation because at the moment you're not spending mm -hmm. the 2% of GDP mm -hmm. when it comes to defense. Are you worried about the future of NATO at this stage? First of all, these are reckless comments. And, and if there is one thing that has made NATO strong over the last years, it is our unity. It is the fact that we are countries together that are very clear that we will defend each other, but also that we stand for something. We stand for the respect of human, uh, of, uh, of human rights. We stand for the rule of law. Uh, we stand for, for unity. So. Putting that in question, I think, really is, uh, is a reckless comment. Um, we knew that the United States are, are looking into decoupling from, uh, from China. Now it seems that Mr. Trump wants to decouple from Europe. I don't really see how that would help the United States. NATO is to the benefit of everyone. And let me just remember, um, there is one country that used Article 5, and that's the United States. And the consequence of that was that all of us were in Afghanistan for 20 years. United States used NATO and they were entitled to do so. Let's be clear, we need each other and, and putting that unity into question is, is, is reckless, especially at a moment like this. Is, is this a moment where you have to step up and potentially prepare your defense policy in a way that you become independent from the United States? Mm -hmm. Well, on, on one element, I, I, I understand what Mr. Trump is saying. Yes, we agreed on 2%. And we have to do it. And on the Belgian side, um, my opinion is that we need to speed up our path towards uh, 2%. I'm three months away for elections, so I cannot decide that now. But my position going into those elections will be that we need to speed up our, our spending, and some other countries need to do that as, uh, as well. As NATO, NATO is stronger if both sides and the United States and Europe is doing their part of the job. That makes us uh, stronger. But we also know as Europeans that we need to be more standing on our own legs. There might be periods in the future where the interests of the United States and Europe are not 100% aligned. I think in general we're better off when they are aligned, but political choices can happen on the other side of the Atlantic and we need to be ready for that. But do you have the capacity to essentially fill in the gap if the United States is not supporting you? Of course we have. And one of the key elements, of course, is, uh, is, is preparing our industry for that. What we have seen over the past months is that we European countries, we do deliver a lot of military equipment to, the, uh, to, to, to Ukraine. We have agreed on 50 billion uh, spending for Ukraine. The United States have not agreed on that, uh, on that yet. So we have taken those decisions that are crucial to support Ukrainian uh, population. But now we need to make sure that we have a wartime economy that can produce at the same, uh, at the same pace. Uh, industrial policy and defense is more interlinked than ever, mm -hmm. and we as Europeans will do our part in that. I'm also happy that Ursula von der Leyen is, is, um, is in favor of using the capital markets to speed up uh, military spending. I'm in favor of that as well. This is not the magic, magic solution, but it could, it could help actually to, um, to speed up uh, and to expand our industrial capacity, and that is really what's at stake today.